Hi, this is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I'd like to talk about cam and crank sensors and ignition setup. The first type sensor I'd like to talk about is the VR sensor, or a variable reluctor position sensor. What this thing basically is, is a magnet sitting right next to the crank wheel with at least one tooth on it. Actually, a crank wheel, it have quite a few teeth on it. But what this thing does is it's an electromagnet, and every time the tooth comes through the electromagnet, you get a plus and minus out of the two wires. These, these wire in to the CKP and CK minus on the AMP EFI Pro Series of ECUs, or if it is the CAM, it would be into the CMP for our CAM position sensor plus and minus. Depending on how these wires are swapped, what you'll see as a tooth comes through the magnet on a, on a scope, you'll see the voltage climb, then instantly drop and go back to zero. And as the tooth comes back in or the next tooth comes in, you'll see a voltage rise, an immediate drop, and the voltage fades back to zero again. It's the sudden change in voltage is what the ECU is looking for. That change in voltage can be a positive change or a negative change. In this case, the voltage going low. If you have the setup backwards where the wires are backwards, what ends up happening is the rising edge is not easy for it to find and you get multiple triggers. So here is a hall sensor. A hall sensor is similar to a VR, except for a hall sensor gives out a square wave. Picture it as a high-speed relay, like you've had in your cars for years. Basically, when the pin comes past, it pushes open this relay. So what happens is you supply it 5 or 12 volts. It depends on the device you have. Check the instructions that came with it and a signal back that goes to the crank position sensor or the cam position sensor, depending on which one you're wiring. And what you get is every time a tooth comes through, you will get a shift up to 5 volts and back down to zero, or up to 12 volts roughly and back down to zero every time a tooth comes through. The code is actually looking for a shift higher than 2.5 volts, so 5 or 12, it really doesn't matter. This is one that's a hall sensor, but it needs what's known as an external pull-up resistor. If you wire one of these things up without a pull-up resistor, what you will see is virtually no change at the crank position positive or the cam position positive wire. And if you'd look on a scope, what you'd see is almost no effect or no effect at all on the voltage coming out of it. What this device is looking for is an external resistor added that would pull up, which is where we get the name pull up resistor, pull this voltage up to five volts anytime the relay is open. But if the relay closes, the voltage ends up going straight to ground. So what we get is zero voltage. And that's why we get this square wave going from zero to five, or roughly five, or zero to 12 volts, depending on how the device is wired. The ECU really doesn't care if it's five or 12, as long as it's well above or well below the two and a half volt trigger voltage. This is what this thing looks like. This is a picture straight off of the DIY AutoTune website. This is known commonly as a cherry hall sensor. It does need the pull-up resistor that comes in the box. What you do is you can run these nuts, the barrel nuts, higher and lower to adjust your sensor to the tooth wheel. Roughly, it's in the 50 or 60 thousandths range uh, at the tightest, and then as the tooth goes away, you end up with a gap of about, oh, an eighth inch, quarter inch, something like that. This happens to be a sensor that is sold by MoTeC. Um, the beauty of this one is it's a very high speed device. 
you can use very small teeth. It is only 7 16 diameter thread, so you can hide it almost anywhere. And this particular one is designed with the internal pull-up resistor, so you don't have to add one in your wiring. This is a typical 36 minus one wheel that would be bolted to the front of the crankshaft. Your hall sensor would be at up roughly where my pointer is. And as the tooth comes in and out, you end up getting a square wave back to the ECU. You can also see this is 35 teeth plus one is missing, which we refer to as a 36 minus one. The cam sensor, it can be a hall sensor, if this was a steel ring with a single tooth, you'd have a hall sensor sitting here. This particular one is an Excel uh, point eliminator or Excel optical pickup. And what it's picking up is every time this hole comes through where the laser is, it will give five volts or zero, I guess it's 12 volts or zero, back to the ECU. Works the same as a hall effectively works the same as a hull, but it does it with light. You can also see on my distributor in the back, I've got my 40 tooth gear buried below, also going at cam speed or half crankshaft speed. So let's look at the ignition setup for a typical 36 minus one wheel. What you do is set it up with tooth wheel, which is the default. Virtually all these settings are default. The only one I've really changed is coil on plug. I happen to have four separate coils on my ECU, wired to my ECU. I have dual wheels with missing tooth, um, 36 minus one, this is the number of teeth, would be there if all the teeth were there, that's that number, and minus one, meaning one has been ground off or missing. And this is the Tooth number one angle, that's the number you use to get the timing to match what the timing table really is asking for. That'll be a different seminar on how to set that up. And the main wheel, the 36 minus one, is going at crank wheel speed, and we're looking for the rising edge. You'll also notice over here is the cranking advance is set to 10. What that is, is the ECU will command 10 degrees before top dead center until the motor comes up to its running RPM, roughly 400 RPM or so. That's all adjustable in the software. This is what a 36 minus one with a cam wheel. Here's your cam wheel. Every 720 degrees, it shows up again. Here is your 36 teeth minus one, or in this case, it's actually minus two to give a big gap. You can see the tight teeth where you're between compression strokes. They get wider as the motor comes up on compression, lower as the compression goes away, and so on and so forth. This happens to be at cranking speed. You will not see this at running speed. This log was actually taken with the composite logger, and I was probably set at log crank and cam. Here's a setup for basically the same motor, but we are set now for pull level. What pull level is, it says at a specific tooth, say tooth 20, I want to check if the cam sensor is triggered or not. What this looks like is here's the same shot where here's your cam sensor, 720 degrees of rotation, another cam sensor comes up. Here's the crank teeth, your missing tooth. By definition, tooth one is the first tooth into the sensor after the missing teeth. Here's tooth 20, which we've got as our pulling tooth. Notice there is no cam sensor triggered. So the motor goes through another 360 degrees of rotation. To, and sure enough, the code will find that the cam sensor is triggered, and that's how it works. This happens to be a Nippon Denso type setup. This is out of my car, where you see the 40 tooth wheel. It's a dual wheel setup. Notice there's no missing tooth. 
missing tooth grays out. Uh, both the cam and crank trigger wheels are going at cam speed and cam speed. And this is what mine looks like. And if I'm done so, it looked very similar where you have the cam sensor. Cam sensor again, 720 and 720 degrees later, yet another cam sensor comes around. And in my case, 40 crank teeth come up every 720 degrees. Thank you for watching.